Hi everyone, this is Brett Simon. Um, so I thought I'd record a quick video to explain my thoughts about um, the situation in Ukraine and Russia and so on, um, as it will relate to DV 2022. Um, uh, and also DV 2023, because I think there may be impacts, right? So um, this will talk about the impacts on Russia uh, and uh, Belarus, uh, perhaps, and also Ukraine, um, but also the impacts and the implications for the rest of Europe, um, and and how things will work out for those uh, for those other countries, particularly in Eastern Europe. Um, so, <clears throat> so let's talk about that. Um, as we know, there is a uh, a war of invasion uh, going on in Ukraine. Um, uh, absolutely, you know, my thoughts on that, uh, politically speaking, uh, are very clear. I think, um, uh, you know, I, my, um, my concern is with the people of Ukraine, to be perfectly honest. So if you're Russian and you don't like that, then feel free to bugger off. I don't care. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm not pleased with what the government of Putin has done to its own people, let alone to the people of a neighboring peaceful country. So that's my position. <laughs> That's it. Um, now, let's talk about the, the, the impact in terms of DV. Um, Ukrainian people, there's about nearly 5,000 winners in DV 2022 from Ukraine. Um, some significant percentage of those, uh, probably a high percentage of those, will pe be people that are still in Ukraine. Um, uh, and many of those cases will be related to uh, men as opposed to the females, right? Now, the men of fighting age uh, have been told in Ukraine that they need to stay in the country and defend their country um, against the invasion, right? So um, so there's going to be a lot of cases in DV 2022, particularly, uh, where while this war continues and while it's difficult for particularly males to leave the country, um, uh, those cases are not going to get processed, right? Now, a derivative spouse cannot process the case without the main selectee. So if the main selectee is a man and has to stay in Ukraine, and obviously the embassy in Ukraine is closed, then that case is going nowhere. That's the reality, right? So for many of those 4,900 you know, people that were selected this year, those cases are, uh, you know, are not going to get processed. Uh, they're not going to get scheduled. Um, or if they are scheduled, they'll be scheduled in the default embassy for uh, Kiev, which is um, Frankfurt in Germany. So, um, so the cases, considering now that uh, uh, you know people will have submitted their DS two sixty, now they don't have to send documents, etc. There will be cases scheduled in Frankfurt for. Ukrainian cases uh, where the people won't be able to um, arrive for their interview. They won't be able to process their interview. Um, and so we'll see either a lot of no-shows or um, a lot of, uh, you know, sort of wasted appointments, which is a no-show, um, or a lot of cases where perhaps uh, the spouse turns up, but she is not the principal selectee and therefore can't process the case in any way. There's no possible way for that uh, case, case to be processed without the principal selectee uh, at the interview. So there's one impact. The other impact I just mentioned was to the, um, uh, you know, to Frankfurt em Embassy itself. Um, Frankfurt is a relatively small embassy. It generally handles just a few hundred cases per year. And so people have asked me, okay, well, are they going to get overwhelmed with, with work? Well, they're going to get a lot more interviews scheduled, but I think unless they're brain dead, the government can figure out that quite a lot of people are just not going to turn up for those interviews. And so, yes, I expect there to be an impact uh, in terms of wasted interview time, um, but hopefully, hopefully, the government is smart enough to figure out, as I have already done, as you can see, um, that you know, many of these cases are not going to be able to, um, you know, actually process their cases. So they could over allocate to Frankfurt without overburdening Frankfurt in terms of the work, right? They could schedule, 
you know, if they thought they could n normally schedule 10 cases in a day, they could maybe do 20 cases in a day because they can pretty much assume that at least five or six or maybe 10 of the cases are not going to turn up each and every day because the man is a, uh, is the principal selectee and he's stuck in Ukraine, right? So there's going to be some chaos, absolutely. There's going to be some impact to Frankfurt. Um, I also think there'll be some impact to the neighboring areas. So, for example, uh, the Vienna embassy the other day um, put out some information about uh, wanting to uh, keep their resources in reserve for the impending flow of, of uh, refugees from Ukraine. There are going to be hundreds of thousands of people that will, that will be spilling out of Ukraine, mainly uh, women and children. And uh, they will be temporarily settled, at least, in, um, in parts of Europe, probably more to the east. And they'll need some, some help. Um, and you know, they're not necessarily American citizens, so it won't necessarily burden the US embassies. Um, but there'll be some impact to the US embassies by uh, the sudden movement of refugees, some of whom will, will be American um, and will need some additional assistance, right? Uh, it's, it's difficult to imagine a large displacement of, um, of such a, a population, hundreds of thousands of people, without there being some impact to those other neighboring countries in terms of additional refugees. And again, some of those will be American citizens. Um, okay, so that's going to be the sort of the impact for Germany, the, the embassy in Germany. For Ukrainians, obviously, it's going to be a difficult time, right? Um, not only is their country being invaded and their countrymen uh, are being needlessly killed, um, uh, but also, uh, you know, some of them are going to lose the opportunity of a lifetime um, because they're not going to be able to process their cases. So it's, it's you know, it's, it's a very sad situation uh, all around, right? Then talk about Russian and uh, Russians. Now I know there are many, many decent Russians, and if you're a Russian that wants to go to America, I presume that you're a little bit more brain switched on than uh, some of the more nationalistic uh, Russians that Putin, you know, controls. Um, and so, um, what's going to be the impact to you? Well, you're already being impacted, as you know, uh, because the Moscow embassy was closed, and so the default backup embassy for um, for Moscow was uh, arranged to be Warsaw. So there are already cases being transferred into Warsaw, and Warsaw is taking on all of that extra work. The same thing may happen with Belarus, of course. There's about 1,800 selectees in Belarus, um, and the same may happen at some point um, you know, with Belarusians, um, uh, Belarus could get involved, you know, there could be some impacts there. However, whilst that has already been happening prior to the invasion of, uh, of your neighbours, um, uh, the invasion by your government uh, of the neighbouring country is bringing all sorts of sanctions from the West, um, uh, from the USA and from uh, pretty much the whole world is unified against your government right now, if you didn't realise, if you're not, I'm, I'm sure most of you have got access to uh, decent non-propaganda news, but um, so, uh, you know, there's going to be all sorts of sanctions, economic and political sanctions uh, against your country. Those sanctions could affect you. There could be additional border control um, issues, you know, based on, on um, security issues. There could be general ill feeling towards your countrymen, um, you know, because of what's going on in Ukraine. There could be issues and there could be some, um, some additional specific political moves that could be implemented by, uh, you know, by our government, the American government, um, on your country. For example, they could say, okay, no more visitors from, um, from Russia, full stop. No, uh, we're not going to issue any more visas to Russians. They could do that. I'm not saying they, they have or they will. Um, I'm just saying that that's a possible repercussion um, from, you know, from what's going on right now. Uh, if Belarus gets involved uh, more, you know, in a more heavy way, then that could also happen to Belarus, right? So, um, so don't be surprised, you know, if you're impacted, you know, in, in those ways. And uh, and as I say, I, I know for a fact uh, there are many Russians that don't agree with the 
uh, with the actions that Putin has taken. Um, you know, unfortunately, it's, it could end up impacting um, even you, right? So, um, and, there, and I, as I say, I, I know from previous experience, there is someone <laughs> who is pro-Russian who thinks I don't know what the hell I'm talking about and, you know, uh, and, you know, I shouldn't even comment on these things and they're not used to hearing the truth because the truth is not really something they subscribe to in the in their own country, etc. I know the type. Um, and honestly, I really don't care about those people's opinions. So, uh, you know, I've got absolutely no interest in hearing what you think about my op opinions uh, about Russia. No interest whatsoever. Okay. So, um, okay, let's talk about the rest of Europe, um, uh, you know, how that could be impacted. Now, between Russia, Belarus, and, um, and Ukraine, um, there are well over 10,000 selectees out of the uh, European total pot. That's a big chunk of selectees. Um, now, EU has already pretty much gone current in terms of the visa bulletin. The visa bulletin stands at 27,000. The highest number is 27,302, I think. So we're more or less, we're more current than, uh, you know, we're, we're more or less current, right, in EU. Um, uh, th there's no logic in that, by the way. It doesn't make any sense, but it doesn't matter. It, you know, that's the situation. However, um, we knew that there was a time impact um, so that even though everyone that's current won't necessarily get a visa, we already knew that, right? Uh, there isn't time uh, to process all of those cases um, to schedule them. But if you take out several thousand uh, cases out of the system, because it's, let's say, it's difficult for Ukrainians to process, maybe it's difficult for Russians to get to Warsaw and process, same with Belarus. If you take out all of those thousands of people, there could be an impact. Thank you. Um, there could be an impact on, uh, in, on how many thousands of people could actually be awarded, uh, um, you know, their visas. And so, you know, that's something we probably will feel the impact from, you know, for the rest of EU as well. It'll probably help the rest of EU, right? Um, that's basically how I see that going. Now, all this is predictive, can't tell exactly what's going to go on. I also don't know how long this whole situation will last. Um, I'm not a praying person, but I pray that the Ukraine, uh, Ukrainian country can hold on for as long as possible um, and, uh, and repel their, uh, their invading, you know, uh, invading marauding hordes. Um, uh, but, you know, I hope that continues and I hope Russia loses this particular fight. Uh, they deserve to lose it, right? So it could go on for, you know, days, weeks, months, who knows? Um, it's likely to, if if Russia succeeds, it's going to be a, um, uh, an occupation, an occupation of a country that doesn't want them there. Um, and um, it won't be an easy situation, and it will have political and ongoing uh, impacts for years to come. It'll have, it'll have, you know, Russia will suffer tremendously through this, but, um, but the Ukraine also will suffer if it's occupied by Russia and there'll be continuing ongoing internal aggression, um, you know, uh, that, that will continue. And so this situation is likely to continue to impact Ukraine, Russia, and so on uh, in DB 2023 and beyond. Okay, so um, I'm sure many of you have thought about these things and have probably come up with the same sort of assumptions that, that I'm listing out there. I just wanted to clarify, uh, you know, my thoughts on the situation just to see, uh, you know, to get your feedback and see whether you think, um, you know, those DV impacts are realistic or not, and just to inform you what I think, you know, could happen. Um, they will still, I'm bound to get this question. I, I'm try, always trying to think about the questions I'm, I'm going to get. Will they continue to select Russians uh, in the uh, DV process? Yes, of course they will. Um, uh, you know, they won't, they won't sort of take out, even if they said there are no more visas to be issued to any Russians for any reason, right? They would still publish the number of Russian selectees. It's just that those people wouldn't be able to get their visas, right? 
So um, they will continue to operate that way. The, the same thing with the Ukrainians. Now, um, it's on Ukraine to decide, uh, and obviously up to the individual, to decide whether Ukrainian males can travel outside their country or not at this time or in the future. Um, and so uh, we don't really know whether that restriction on travel from within Ukraine is going to be um, you know, taken down at any point in order to then let people uh, travel outside the country to do things like attending uh, interviews for the DV lottery and other things, obviously, just to live a safe, peaceful life. That's frankly all most of us want, right? So, um, okay, so uh, hopefully that's covered things. Hopefully that's explained things. Can't think of any other questions that you may have, but um, but by all means, please do ask, ask those questions and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, thank you for your time. Please subscribe to the channel. Give me a like, thumbs up if you like this video. Thank you very much. All right, bye-bye now.